And welcome back to theCUBE, everyone. I'm John Walls, continuing our coverage here of AWS reInvent 22. We're part of the AWS Startup Showcase, this is the uh, global startup program that AWS so proudly sponsors. And with us to talk about what they're doing now in the, in the AWS space is Sean Knapp, who's the CEO of Ascend.io. And uh, Sean, good to have you here with us, we appreciate it. Thanks for having me, John. Yeah, thanks for the time. First off, got to show the t-shirt. Um, you caught my <laughs> attention. Big data is a cluster. I don't think you get a lot of argument from some folks, right? But it's, it's your job not. to make some sense of it, is it not? Yeah. Tell us about Ascend.io. Sure, Ascend.io is a, a data automation uh, platform. Uh, what we do is connect a lot of the, the disparate parts of what data teams do when they create ETL and EOT data pipelines. And we use advanced levels of automation uh, to make it easier and faster for them to build these complex systems uh, and have their world be a little bit less of a, a cluster. All right, so let's get into automation a yeah. little bit then. Um, again, I mean, your definition of, of automation and how you're applying it to your business case. Absolutely. Yeah. It, you know, what we see oftentimes is as spaces mature and evolve, uh, the number of repetitive and repeatable tasks that actually become far less differentiating, but far more taxable, if you will, right. uh, to the business start to accumulate uh, as those common patterns uh, emerge. And, and you know, as we see standardization around tech stacks like on Amazon and on Snowflake and on Databricks, and as you see those uh, patterns really start to, to formalize and standardize, uh, it opens up the door to basically not have your team have to do all those things anymore mm -hmm. and write code or perform the same actions that they used to always have to. And you can lean more on technology to properly automate uh, and remove the, the monotony of those tasks and give your teams greater leverage. All right, so, so let's talk about uh, at least maybe your, your, the journey say in the past 18 months in terms of automation and, and what have you seen from a trend perspective and how are you trying to address that uh, in order to, uh, to meet that need. Yeah, I think the last 18 months uh, have become you know, really exciting, uh, as we've seen both a, you know, a, a very exciting uh, boom and bust uh, cycle that are driving a lot right. of other macro behaviors. Uh, you know, what we've seen uh, over the last 18 months is far greater adoption of the, the standard, what we call the data planes, uh, the, the mm -hmm. uh, architectures around Snowflake and Databricks and, and, and Amazon. And what that's created as a result is the emergence of w what I would call as the next problem. Mm -hmm. You know, as you start to solve that category of that's how what do you it always get works too, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. It always the, works that the, way. This is the wonderful thing about t uh, technology is the job security of there's always <laughs> the next problem uh, to go solve. Um, and, and that's what we see is, you know, as we, we go into cloud, we get that infinite scale, infinite capacity, mm -hmm. uh, capacity infinite flexibility. Uh, and you know, with the, these modern now data platforms, uh, we get that infinite ability to store and right. process data incredibly quickly uh, with incredible ease. And so what, what do most organizations do? You take a ton of new bodies, like all the people who wanted to do those like really cool things with data, and like, okay, now you can. Right. And so you start throwing a lot more use cases, you start creating a lot more data products, you start doing a lot more things with data, and this is really where that third category starts to emerge, which is you, you get this data mess. Uh, not mesh, but the, a data mess. You get cluster. a data cluster. You get a cluster. Exactly, where the complexity skyrockets. And as a result, that, that rapid innovation that, that you were all looking for and, and promised just comes to a screeching halt as right. you're just, just like trying to swim through molasses. Uh, and as a result, this is where that, that new awareness around automation starts to really heighten. You know, we, we did a really interesting uh, survey at the start of this year. Did it as a blind survey, independent third party, surveyed 500 chief data officers, data scientists, mm -hmm. data architects, uh, and asked them a, a plethora of questions. But one of the questions we asked them uh, was, do you currently or do you intend on investing in data automation uh, to increase your team's productivity? And what was shocking, and I was very surprised by this, okay. uh, what was shocking was, only three and a half percent said they do today, which is really interesting because it, it, it really hones in on this notion of automation is beyond what a lot of us think of, you know, tooling and enhancements today. Mm -hmm. Only three and a half percent today had it. But 88.5% said they intend on making data automation investments in the next 12 months. Mm. And that stark contrast of how many people have a thing and how many people want that benefit of automation, right. uh, I think it is incredibly, 
critical as we look to 2023 and beyond. I mean, it just seems like a no-brainer, does it not? I mean, no, you're, it's your business, so of course you agree with me. But, but of course, um, of course, what a yeah, brilliant statement. But it is. It seems like, you know, the more you're you're able to automate certain processes and then free up your resources and your dollars to be spent elsewhere, and yeah. your and your human capital, you know, to be invested yep. elsewhere, um, that just seems to be. A layup. I'm really, I'm very surprised by that three and a half percent figure. I was too. I actually was expecting it to be higher. I was expecting five to ten percent. Yeah. Uh, as the, there's other tools in the the marketplace around ETL tools or uh, orchestration tools that that some would argue fit in the automation category. And I think the what, what the market is telling us based on on that research is that those in themselves are don't qualify as automation. That, that the market has a a larger vision for automation, mm -hmm. something that is more metadata driven, more AI back, that takes us a greater leap uh, and of leverage for the teams than, than uh, what the, the existing capabilities okay. in the industry today can yeah. afford. So if you got this big leap that you can make, but, but, but maybe, you know, should sites be set a little lower? Are you, are you in danger of creating too much of an expectation or too much of a false hope? Because, you know, I mean, sometimes incremental increases are okay. Um, I agree. I, I, I think the you know, I, I think you, you want to do a little bit of both. I think you you want to have a plan for for reaching for the stars, and you got to be really pragmatic uh, as well. Uh, even uh, inside of a, a, a Sundio, uh, we actually have a core value which is build for 10x, plan for 100x, and so know where you're going. Right. But but solve the problems that are right in front of you today as you, as you get to that next scale. And I think the the really important part for a lot of companies is how do you think about what that trajectory is mm -hmm. and be really smart around where you choose to invest. As you know, one of the, the sayings that we have is last year's uh, innovation mm -hmm. is next year's anchor around your neck. Mm -hmm. And that's because we, we were in this, very fortunately, so this really exciting, rapidly moving, innovative space. But the thing that was your advantage not too long ago right. is everybody can move so quickly, now becomes commonplace and a year or two later, if you don't jump on whatever that next innovation is that the industry start to standardize on, you're now on the hook paying massive debt and, and paying, you know, you thought you had you know, home mortgage debt and now you're paying the worst of credit card <laughs> debt, uh, <laughs> trying to pay that down and, and maintain your velocity. It's at a the whole same different time. kind of FOMO, right? I'm fearing yeah. missing out. I'm gonna miss out. What am I missing out on? What the next big thing? Exactly. Like, missing out on that. And so we encourage a lot of folks, you know, as you think about this, it, it, and as it pertains to automation too, is you know, solve for some of the problems right in front of you but really make sure that you're, you're designing the right approach that as you stack on you know, five times, 10 times as many people building data products and, and you, your, your volume and library of, of data weaving throughout your, your business, mm -hmm. um, make sure you're making those right investments. Uh, and, and that's one of the reasons why we do think automation is so important and, and really this, this next generation of automation, which is a, a metadata and AI backed level of automation they can just achieve and accomplish so much more than, than sort of traditional norms. Yeah, on that, like uh, as far as next gen goes, what do you think is going to be possible that cloud sets the stage for that maybe you know, not too long ago seemed really out of reach? Like, like what's going to give uh, somebody to work on that 88% in there yeah. that's going to make their spin come your way? Ah, good question. So I, I think there's a couple fold. I, you know, I think the, Right now we see two things happening. You know, we see large movements going to uh, the, the, the dominant data platforms today. Mm -hmm. And you know, frankly, one of the, the biggest challenges we see people having today is just how do you get data in? Mm -hmm. Which is insanity to me because that's not even the value extraction, that is the cost center piece of it. Just right. get data in so you can start to right. do something with it. Uh, and, and so I think that becomes a, a, a huge hurdle. Uh, but the access to new technologies, mm -hmm. the ability to start to unify more of your data and, and in rapid fashion, I think is, is really important. Um, I think as we start to, to invest more in this metadata backed layer that can connect that those notions of how do you ingest your data, how do you transform it, how do you orchestrate it, how do you uh, observe it. Um, one of the really compelling parts of this is metadata does become the new big data itself. Mm -hmm. And so to do these really advanced things to give these data teams greater levels of automation and leverage, you actually need cloud capabilities to process large volumes of not the data, but the metadata around mm -hmm. the data mm -hmm. itself uh, to deliver on these really powerful capabilities. And so I think that's why the, 
this new world that we see of the, the developer platforms for modern data cloud applications actually benefit from being a, a cloud native application themselves. Mm -hmm. So before you take off, I'm talk about the AWS relationship. Um, part of the startup showcase, start part of the, the growth program. Uh, and we've talked a lot about the cloud, what it's doing for your business, but let's just talk about, again, how integral they have been to your success and, and likewise, what you think maybe you bring to their table too. Yeah, well we bring a lot to the table. Absolutely, um, I had no doubt about that. <laughs> uh, I mean, honestly, it, working with, with AWS has, has been truly fantastic. Yep. You know, I think you know, as a, a startup that's really growing and expanding uh, your footprint, um, having access to the resources in uh, AWS to drive adoption, drive best practices, mm -hmm. drive awareness is, is incredibly uh, impactful. I think, you know, conversely too, the, the value that uh, Ascend provides uh, to the, the AWS ecosystem is tremendous leverage on onboarding and driving faster use cases, faster adoption of all the really great, cool, exciting mm -hmm. technologies that we get to hear about mm -hmm. by bringing more advanced layers of automation to the mm -hmm. existing product stack, we can make it easier for more people to build more powerful things faster and safely, uh, which I think is what most businesses at, at reInvent really are looking for. It's win-win. Win-win. Yeah, that's for sure. Sean, thanks for the time. Thank you, John. Good job on the t-shirt, and uh, keep up the good work. <laughs> Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Sean Knapp joining us here on the AWS uh, startup program, part of their of um, the startup showcase. We are, of course, on theCUBE. I'm John Walls, we're at the Venetian in Las Vegas, and theCUBE, as you well know, is the leader in high-tech coverage. <laughs>